Ali, yeah, good to see you, mate. Um, congratulations. Thank you. But first and foremost, you missed training today. We were worried about you. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm all good. Just recovering. Um, it's been a tough week. Last week, obviously, playing two games. Um, and obviously, I'm a young boy still growing. So it's just that. You're good to go if, the, if called upon. Definitely. Um, you trained with the, the senior squad back in June, of course, but you've formally called up this time. Does it feel different? Uh, maybe a tiny bit. Obviously, coming and training in June was a, a big blessing. Um, I enjoyed it so much. And then, obviously, formally getting called up now was amazing. Um, I remember when I got the text, I called my dad straight away. And I think he started getting a bit emotional, to be honest. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's a dream come true. I guess last time, did Southgate make it pretty clear to you that you were joining to, to, to be part of the training squad, but you wouldn't be part of the match day squad? Whereas now, you hopefully will be part of the match day squad. Yeah, hopefully. Um, obviously, last time I had the Euros after it, so there's a lot of things to take into consideration. Um, but now, yeah, hopefully that's the plan. Listen, when you were in discussions with Chelsea over, over a new contract and you had these England ambitions as well, very clearly. Did you need reassurance from Mauricio Pochettino that you were going to get opportunities, that you were going to play a decent number of games and get some decent minutes in with Chelsea this season? Uh, not really. I just spoke to him. Um, and he just gave me the confidence that, you know, if you come in and train well, then you get a chance to play. Um, I'm not a player that's going to demand anyone to tell me I'm, you're going to give me minutes. That's not me. I've not been brought up like that. I just wanted to know if I'd get the chance to impress him and earn my, earn my spot and hopefully keep it. You've done that. So far. <laughs> uh, you'll be aware that John Stones, Tyro Mings, Connor Cody are all injured. Uh, Eric Dyer's not featured at all for Spurs, so wasn't considered. So there's a bit of a gap there. Is this an opportunity you need to really grab with both hands and, and try and impress? Yeah, of course. Um, every time you come here, you know, it's an opportunity to impress Gareth and the coach and staff. Um, it's just like any, any normal career, club, no matter where you are, you always got to impress. And um, hopefully yeah, I get the chance to and we'll see what happens. Um, your versatility is very obvious. I mean, Poch has used you on the left of a back three, uh, uh, the left back in a, in a four as well. How do you adapt to that? I, I mean, I don't know if you'll tell me one of those positions you prefer to the other, but, but how do you adapt to it? Because they're actually very different roles in the modern game, aren't they? I think I grew up, well, I grew up playing left back when I was a bit younger. Um, and I went until I was about 15, 16, until I went centre half. So growing up, being able to play that position has helped me out a lot, um, helped me out loads. So now when I'm older, I still kind of know the ways. I understand it, obviously playing right next to a left back and definitely having great left backs in my team, actually. Um, and Cucurella, that helped me. So I can always ask some questions. So it's just down to that, really. Um, it's still very early in your career. You're only 20 years old still. Um, but with the kind of the speed and the progress you've made at Chelsea, are you targeting a regular spot as one of England's centre-backs, left-backs, defenders? And obviously the Euros is... It's less than 12 months away, so is that on your horizon as well? Is that a real target for you? Yeah, of course. Um, you know, playing for Chelsea, one of the biggest clubs in the world, it's got to be my aim to hopefully, you know, be in the England team um, come Euros. Obviously, it's still a long time till that comes, so I've got to keep working hard and push myself, and we'll see what happens. Good man, thank you. We go Alex next, and then John. Hi, Levi. Yeah. Uh, it's been a special year for you. Do you think you'll be able to look back on this and say this was the the year that kick-started your career? You had your breakthrough in the Premier League, then won the Euros with the under-21s and the long-term contract at Chelsea, and now your senior England call-up. Sounds pretty good. Yeah, it's been an amazing year. Um, I've had no complaints about the year, but, you know, there's been a lot of ups and still been downs. Sort of lot, um, sorry, a load of stuff that I've had to overcome. Um, but, you know, it's all part of, part of my career, and you're going to get that. So, yeah. How do you find it, pl uh, playing and working under Mauricio Pochettino? Yeah, he's a great manager. Um, it really makes me feel comfortable and allows me to play my best game. Um, I think him at the club has changed it so much and now we're just ready to kick on, you know, hopefully start picking up these wins. When we spoke in the summer, you said you thrive off competition. doesn't get any better competition than the senior England squad. How are you finding it and how are you feeling going into this week? Yeah, I'm really enjoying it so far. Um, from last time when I was here in June, um, I enjoyed it. Everyone was so welcoming and it made a big difference towards me. Um, and now I've settled in a bit, I'm ready to kick on and yeah, hopefully prepare for the upcoming week. John. Hi, Lee, hi. Um, who would you say were your, your influences, you know, when you think who've helped you to get to, to where you are now? I've had a load. Um, I think definitely last year, I'm going to say Adam Lallana. 
Um, me, I'm someone that's really, I'm a chilled person. And sometimes I need someone to give me a little bit of a push. And at first I didn't really understand why he was always on me and trying to help me. But then once it clicked in my head, I realized that he only wants to help me. And you know, I don't think I ever realized, you know, how happy and how lucky I was to be able to play next to him. Um, and yeah, he's definitely helped me a load. So, so what, how was he pushing you? Every day in training. Um, there was times where, you know, I might just be having an off day or not really be feeling like myself. And he's there just no matter what, just pushing me and push me. Um, and it's definitely made me wake up a bit and realize the opportunity that I've got and I can't waste it. So, so when you say pushing you, how? Just in training, just giving me compliments if, if I need it, if I'm struggling a bit, you know, tell me, come on, you're right. If I'm doing well, keep pushing me to make sure I'm doing well. Uh, communication, always putting his arm around me. It's the same as Lewis Dunk, uh, same as some players at Chelsea, Chilwell, Thiago Silva, you know, you've got leaders in the team for a reason. Um, and that's their, that's their job, to help young ones. And I've definitely had that. I've had the best. So you must have heard from Adam Lalana then since you were named in the squad last week, have you? Nah, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> and you mentioned Lewis Dunk. Obviously playing alongside him last season as, as, as much as you did. I mean, did, did you ever think about the possibility of you both perhaps playing for England in central defence? I know, it's amazing. Um, Obviously, playing with each other last year, I don't think I really thought we'd be here together. Um, but it shows how, how hard we've worked, how much um, we've worked together and how we've improved. And I think it's a blessing that we're both here. Um, and yeah, hopefully play together. And give us an appreciation of, of how good he is, you know, the kind of at the other end of his career. Yeah, I don't think re uh, people realise how good he actually is. Um, being able to train with him every day, which I did last year, I realised I see some of the things he's done. And playing alongside him, he helped me out a lot. And have you had a little word together, you know, having both come back in here into the England squad? Because obviously he was in the squad at the end of last season, wasn't he? But, but couldn't join up. Yeah, um, I think me and him are close, so we talk a lot. So even if we're at dinner, we'll talk and, um, yeah, just have normal conversations with him. It's all been good. Lovely. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. Dan, go back to you. Have you spoken to Adam about playing under Mauricio, Levi? Uh, yeah, um, well, not playing under him, but I've had conversations with him before about him. And yeah, he's just, he told me how much of a good guy he was. Um, and obviously Adam's played under him and thinks he's a really good manager. And I took that on board with me when I was making my decision, of course, um, before I met him. And then when I finally did meet him, I realised everything, everything he said was true. He's a great guy and a great manager. Could you just talk to us a bit more about, about what makes him a, a great guy and great manager? I think the big thing for me was the first day I came in, him just putting his arm around me um, and showing me that you know he respects me as a person and also a player. And it allows me to work my hardest and, and want to play my best for him. I think that's a big difference, him showing that you know the two sides where mo a majority of managers might just look at you as a footballer, which he doesn't. Um, and yeah, that helps me play my best football. How does he compare with De Zerbi? <laughs> um, I think they're, they've got their similarities. I think they're both um, caring people. And when they're on the pitch, they want 100% out of you. And I think that's the best managers. They're perfectionists. So they push you and push you. Um, and that's what makes them both great managers. Mauricio's got a fabulous record when he was at Southampton and Spurs of producing players for England. I think Adam was one of them. And then obviously Harry Kane, Delhi. That there are loads more that must give you confidence that working under him, you know, your England career can really progress. Yeah, of course. Um, just working under him in general, I'm I know I'm going to improve. I can guarantee that because he's such a good manager and he will push me. He won't let me have any off days, and that's what I need. Someone like me, I'd, if if someone lets me go to sleep, I might just, you know, have a good day, have a bad day. But I need someone there just to give me that kick up my bum and say keep going, and that's what he does. And just finally, when you were talking to Alex about your, your great year, you said you'd had to overcome some, some things. Can you just elaborate on, on what you meant there? Of course. When I, when I first joined Brighton, I wasn't playing. Um, and then obviously Graham Potter left and De Zerbe came in. I still wasn't playing for a while. And it was tough, mentally tough, going into training every day and not played and not feel like you wanted. But you just got to get your head down and keep working hard. And I think that's what I've done. And that's where, you know, the big leaders in the team helped me last season. Um, and then once I did get my chance, I just had to grab my shirt and try and keep it. Um, and even then, some, some games I might not play and it's tough, it's up and down, it's up and down. 
and then that's just helped me so much and then obviously went Euros and then had a great Euros which I can't complain about and now so far it's been so good at Chelsea and does this kind of feel like a vindication of getting through these tough times 100% um, it's all worth it in the end got to keep working hard and that's what I have so far but now it's just like keep going I'm here now to so keep going just following on from that there obviously are a lot of players in Chelsea's history who have gone out on loan and then never made it you know did you fear in those moments of Brighton that you m that might happen to you not really um, I've always been confident in myself um, and I've had the right people around me that's also believed in me and pushed me every day and my family um, never let me, never let me give up I think that's a really big thing um, so no not really was it obviously you had a great summer on the pitch but w was it a difficult summer off it because there was a lot of talk about maybe you go back to Brighton on a permanent move obviously a bit of uncertainty about the contract how did you kind of park all that uh, not really I think off the pitch you know I just kind of kept myself to myself I didn't really think about it too much because um, obviously I had Euros, I was here, then I had Euros, so I didn't really have much time to think about it. Um, but obviously I have a lot of respect for Brighton and everything that happened last year. Um, but like I've said before, I've been at Chelsea since I've nine. I love the club and that was my decision and I stand by it. And just in terms of England, you can make us all feel really old here. W what's the first tournament you remember? Oh, first tournament I remember? Um, hmm. What was the tournament when Frank Lampard hit the bar versus Germany? 2010. Yeah, I think that was the first one I remember. What, what, what are your memories of watching that, presumably with family? I remember I was, at a, I was with my dad and mum and cousin somewhere. Oh, we was on holiday somewhere. And then I think that's where I remember watching it and my dad going crazy, screaming us in. Um, and that was my first time. That was my memories from that. Have you always been, I mean, this is a stupid question to say, have you always been an England fan? But do you know what I mean? Have you always been sort of invested in the England team? From yeah, of course. Um, I, I used to love watching the best players play. And when they could all come together, what more could I ask for? Thank you.